Recording in progress. All right. Good morning, everyone. Here we are. Another month, project management. So, just two quick introductions. I'm Jenny Knight, city administrator. Justin Schnitzel, Dollar Horse Director. Brandon Green with Jones and Associates. Brian Barber with Fire Marshal. The uh, Todd Richards Inspector with the Water. Uh, hey, let's jump in. Blade, we've got Oak Hollow as our first discussed item. Yeah. So I know you submitted some new corrections, and I think that, oh, and our building official Tyler is joining us as well. Uh, I know you've got some feedback, Brandon, on the review. Yeah, we've gone through and made um, several comments, and maybe what would be best, Clay, is if we just sent them over to you to address. But um, one of the biggest that we wanted to talk about is 275 East and Parcel 8, so targeted. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about this in the office a little bit, and it probably needs to be, not probably, we should probably have some work in here for that little part because I can see if we've got this is parking right here. So um okay so they'll put some, some stalls in it. And <laughs> what our thought or discussion was people will probably walk the live there, but what if people that live there invite friends between both the group? Yeah and I think we're good. They're gonna be adequate. That's what we were what's the little concern about. It's making sure that we, if we don't want them parking in the street. Yeah, or, I don't think we've got enough spaces there. I think there's probably, no, there's more than three. I mean, it's full street width, and that's, uh, so you probably got, maybe. I, I thought we had the discussion because that falls all the 150 as well. Do we need a camera in that that parking lot is also going to serve as a hammerhead for? So it needs to be a little bit longer. This is the only parking right here. Right. And but what I'm saying is this doesn't need the 150 foot. This is too long from this intersection for a fire truck to back down. So there had to be a fire turn out for a hammerhead. I thought we extended that parking. To make that a happen. No. No. That 23 oh, let's see. It's about 160. Because there's 80 and 79. It says 139. It's 139 and 140 on the other one. Okay, so it is 139. Yeah, yeah we, we okay. adjusted. Okay. That, we oh, adjust I thought that said 80, it says 60. Okay. Yeah. That, yeah, so we 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 intentionally kept that. We knew the fire restrictions yeah. there. Yeah. We actually, as you remember, our early our early drawing on this, if you could scroll up just a tiny bit. Our early drawing showed the road over here. Yes. And we had a longer leg on this side, and we adjusted the whole layout to accommodate fire requirements. So uh, if you want additional parking. Not sure how I could make it easily work. Um, I don't think you're going to have a lot of, you know, if, if neighbors have have guests, they would park at their house. I think in some cases you'll have people who will use the pavilion who will invite guests, and you would have people parking there. But we also, are these city streets, remind me, are these city streets or private streets? These are all city streets. So it's some developments where we have private streets, they have their own enforcement or parking on the street could be enforced by their HOA, but for their public streets, we have to do the enforcement, which Technically, if it's a public street, they can park on it for up to 24 hours. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering, I don't know what the answer is. They bring it, just bring it to your attention. 
to maybe think about having five cars, how many lots, 30, 30 lots or two. You know, we could put, here's an option. Um, Jenny, can you scroll over here? I might be able to put some parking here. No, I but it would be away from the park. Is there a, is that gonna be, is that just a hammerhead? There won't be a temporary turnaround or anything? It's, yeah, it's just, it's just a hammerhead. Um, maybe, maybe we can put some parking. I don't know that, that attention. I, I don't know that it's really going to help because people are going to be going to the park. They're not going to go because you got fish in the pond. I think we addressed that with the asphalt with, but you're not going to be okay because he was doing the sidewalk back curb, but it was giving us a little more asphalt with. Yeah, so I guess I mean we've got 55 feet right away. And they all have double car garage. They all have a two car garage. Okay, maybe it won't be an issue. There should be four parking spaces per unit. Yeah, in the garage, two outside. Two outside. And then with you know 55 foot right away. I mean, you do have some area of street parking. Maybe we'll Well, obviously, we never have enough parking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if we got two car garages, no car garages, people can park in driveways in the street, maybe one of them offers some parking. We should be allowed to help there, it would be helpful to have signage in the parking lot that says no overnight parking visitors only, so the residents aren't parking an extra car on those spaces. Yeah, an HOA, we could put that in the HOA rules. Yeah. Good. And that will help eliminate people utilizing those very few parking spots for anything but access to the park. So that, that park will be maintained by the HOA. The pickleball courts are technically private due to the chair development. That's great. Okay. okay. Um, you can certainly put a no overnight parking. Is that actually 830 North or should it be 750 North on the right? This one? Yeah. I'm not sure about that. Maybe we can just chat on it. I just kind of, as I know. So I just have, just have several kind of notes that have to do with the flat. Um, the fence that runs through 6R and 11R, we probably ought to take that off the flat so we can um, show the fence when we need to get it. Where? Between 6 3 no, it's and 11R. It looks like it just needs to be. But it's uh, just some notes like that. And then we went through and updated all the property owners and adjacent to it around and talked to them some parcel to groups. Okay. So that's yes. Okay. And then you want to other stay one just make sure that your radius is me match the city standards. We check you of them and Especially in that table, there's six of them that kind of okay. 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 standard, but I'll forward this on to you. Oh, one other question. I'll go to back to the old one. Oh, it's not. You're not. In our, we had a little playground that was kind of sitting out there in the middle of the park. We weren't sure if that was going to So it is. Yeah, there's actually. So. Maybe I didn't send you okay. the, the landscaping plan. Yeah, the landscaping plan shows up pretty well. Okay. So we, as you remember, originally we had pickleball courts right here. Yeah. Which was really the perfect place for it. But the residents said, yeah, yeah, it's going to be right next to us. So we, we shifted this over. And then, yeah, we added a pavilion. Well, we had the pavilion in there. And then there's a little playground here. Yeah, a little playground. Okay. Um, I think all of the all of the notes that we have on our plans 
there are things that can be addressed pretty simple, pretty, pretty easily. There is no okay. Yeah, send me red lines on that and I'll get the I'll get those assessed with flat and then I'll send you plans as well. Now some of the engineering stuff we might have to talk to Matt about, but I think on our engineering pretty clear. our main concern is still that it's with our long this could be here. It's still going to be irrigation. You'll need to get with your engineer to get with uh, the owners of Lloyd Hollow to do a size testing and, and figure out if that pump system can pump it back up to there, or if we've got to resize that pumping system and get a little bit bigger pump in there. Yeah, I had uh, I, I I went over there one day. I think the guy that works or was putting in fence you know, along that uh, retention area. I talked to him, and he said the pump was pretty big. It's already oversized, but the, the pump is oversized for that. But again, depending on taking that water from where the pump sits all the way up seven hundred at the back end of year, with still having enough. Pressure. We just got to verify that. That's just going to be an engineer spec and standard. The size line that they run in that uh, original project, okay. eight inch. But, well, but he's tying off of coming right out of the pump with his own line. Oh. And then diverting it around, which at that point, I think we'll do a paid by six reducer and do a six inch line. It's going to we were pretty six inch. Six inch would handle this small area of development. But again, and then we've got to verify that for your landscape plan, how many irrigatable acres you're going to do, because now we have eight some requirements for the Western and Bonavista state water. So we have enough water for irrigatable acres. Okay. Check all that, and then I'll I'll have them verify that. Once you get the water shares and the specs, we need to, we need to annex into the Fort Mile Special Service District. That's a couple month process. Also, just be aware that we can send you. Uh, Jack can send you the petition. Has to be signed by the property owners. I'm assuming you own the, all the properties at this point. Uh, so you can submit that to us and then we'll begin the annexation process. Okay. It is prepared though, but to do the water service, it's got to be incorporated. Okay. Four mile special service district. Would there be any reason that? No, not not on our end. We just have to match the water shares and have the water share certificates of the property owners okay. so that Western has it assigned to this. Okay. All right. So it's good. Which I'm assuming you have. You, Got water shares Yeah. Okay. Any other concerns on it? Only other concern is the easement. We got the sewer easement worked out for where it drains yeah. out. So. Yeah, I'd like to talk about that for a minute. So it looks like in, in the review from Bob Vista, they're not requiring to move back to, to 700 North. So uh, we had talked with with city engineer and with Justin about about running this. So the this easement that runs along here, we talked about whether we could get uh, uh, approval to do. Uh, since we don't have to put that loop back, we talked about maybe doing an eighteen foot easement down across the. Uh, Right, right line the loves property. So, Jenny, if you could bring up um, GOBS model. Sure. Let's look at that low property and we'll show you what we have a minor. So, we can pull up the engineering either way. 
So where we come here, um, right here, we've got we've got basically eighteen feet right here uh, between the house and the and the property line, and so um, as you recall, this will be subdivided. So the log property will go across here. So this will be subdivided to be incorporated into our subdivision, and then we'll have the the retention pond will be right here. And then the easement would come along here to 700 North. And so you guys are still okay with the 18 foot? That's what we talked about for the sewer. But we're not in his, his memo was saying we weren't okay with the three being in that 18 foot space. Yeah, so no, he's got pressurized irrigation, uh, stolen water sand. So, so in that 80 plus space, we were more comfortable putting all those three right in that space. So, whether you adjusted this pressurized irrigation to the other side of the prop of the love property and got that through the sewer and storm water on one side, or the storm water on the other side, or the sewer. One, one of the three have to be pulled out and placed on the place. So, so how much do we need, do you think? Well, if you do irrigation, I mean, a 10 foot east PUE on either property line. Well, 18 foot on. Yeah, how much do I need on the other side? A 10 foot. A 10 foot? Okay. If, if, unless you're doing storm drain, that's 15 inch pipe and then it's probably 15 foot. Okay. But if you're doing a six inch irrigation line, 10 feet. Okay. All right. So we have two options. Um, the, the first option, it sounds like the most favorable, would be to get it a, to get an easement through this property, this adjoining property, 276. Um, my other option is really the only other option I have is I'd have to come down this side of the property. And in that case, this would have to shift unless I can get an easement from this property owner. And I've already talked to her. She's she's open to the idea, but, you know, so, okay. Like I said, it's just in 18 feet with the sewer, the depth that it is, and you stack a stormwater on top of it, and we have a sewer line break, and it starts eroding away, that stormwater line wants to fall in on us. You know, and then add a third pressurized irrigation line into that little short 18 feet and just double point. Could those services be, and I'm just thinking out loud, where they don't have a joint, can they be solid HDPE pipe through that so that you reduce the risk of having potential leak or break? Or could we face it somehow? Again, that's some of your engineering can propose dollars, and, and we definitely look at it. Um, yeah, just that's that's the hard thing is, you know, the reason people don't understand roadways are so thick, they're so wide, is because well, you got sewer that has to be ten feet away from water, culinary water, and you got irrigation, you got storm drain, you got gas, power, you know, and just all the utilities have to go in that right away. Okay. Well, that's that's our next big hurdle is to get this easement squared away. So, uh, but you're is it so you do have an easement along the east side of the property, but mm -hmm. it's not big enough for all three utilities. Yeah. So, so essentially, that correct me if I'm wrong. You're purchasing the last property. Yeah, done deal. Done yeah. deal. Okay. <laughs> so they they have the right to record whatever easement they want. On that property, if they just don't want to tear down the house or the shop, 
um, that's already existing and they just right. want to clean it up, but they don't quite have enough room between the shop and the property line to get that 10 feet on the west side. Yeah, the shop and the property line, I mean, that's tight yeah. there. It's probably five or six feet. And there's not much room there. So, I mean, it is possible to, if we have to go that direction, we would, I mean, we would chop up part of the shop. I mean, yeah. You know, but we don't obviously want to do that. But uh, again, if, if there's a easement to be made, and you probably wouldn't even have to dig on that property of the 252 to, to give you a five foot mm -hmm. public utility easement. For that storm or for that pressurized irrigation system, it's not ideal to us. We hate having pressurized in people's main yards, but we yeah. will work with God. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right. We'll get that finalized. <laughs> Anything else, Brandon, on your side? Thanks so all forward to these drawings so that you can get them. To your engineer again, it's just a lot of little comments. Okay, now let's see. So I'm waiting for, uh, I haven't received anything back from Pineview on either Summit View or local call. I'll call it. I'll call it. I'll call it. has nothing to do with Pineview. Oh, yeah. We're, we're, so, you can sell so large and Yeah, that's right. So, but, um, so I'll, I'll table that until we get to some of you. Yeah. So, okay. Sounds good. <clears throat> Anything else from the rest of the staff? Fire okay? Okay. I think we can wrap up. We'll call it that. Do you have any other questions? I don't. So on some of you, um, So I haven't received any back from behind you on issue review on the red lines for that. We've, we've, we've redlined both phase one and two. Further back over it. Yeah. Uh, the only thing we're, you know, Trevor and I are not clear on is I think you've got the paperwork as far as the water shares need to be, another out that are out, need to be allocated for that. I got, I got, I got those yesterday. Uh, we've closed on that purchase of the property now. Uh, from the Wallens. Okay. And uh, they could not locate the certificates, so they had duplicate certificates. And okay. sent those. They, they sent me a fax copy of it yesterday. There's 72 shares. Okay. That's the only thing we need verification on is making sure that that's all been allocated and making sure yeah. that water has, or that to the ground has been uh, petitioned to be included into the district. Because I don't know that that was ever part of. The Pine View territory, so we need to we need to check in with Doug Jepson and Dan Johnson, the, the engineer and acting engineer. Uh, they're going to to verify um, the inclusion has been taken care of. You petition to come into the district. Water shares have been allocated and transferred over. Okay, so that was Doug Jepson. Doug Jepson. Okay. Dan Johnson. Dan Johnson. Dan, Doug, Doug's leaving at the end of the year, and Dan Johnson will be taking his place, but they're both on vacation, so they gave us the, <laughs> the duty today. <laughs> and I'm leaving, too, at the end of the year, and that's why Trevor's here. He's going to be involved in a lot of these uh, upcoming planning meetings with you guys. Okay. All right. But we do, we have looked at it, we've redlined, these are your copies. <clears throat> I'll get that. It's just a matter of all the technicality getting taken care of, but we're ready to go. And you're, all the keys have been crossed and back okay. off. Perfect. Awesome. Great. Um, so we have a couple of things um, that I'm going to bring up today. Um, as we as we finalized the purchase on this this property, we noticed a few. So the boundary description that you probably have here is is this the one most recent one that I sent you, Jenny? I so so this has probably been corrected. We we discovered we discovered an overlap in the description. 
we made some adjustments. It looks like we we got most of them fixed, but we have one little one little area where it's I think it's on the back side of the property. There's a little overlap here still. So they've adjusted the description to match it and, and to be okay with it, but we discovered that error. The other thing that we've addressed or the we're in the process of addressing is over here at this Lewis Horton family res uh, family trust property. Uh, there's an encumbrance there of about a foot and a half, almost, well, 1.8 feet. Uh, their fence is on our property. And so we're working with them to you know, come to a resolution. And their fence is not a simple vinyl fence. You pull posts such a wood over. They have a very nice fence. What's kind of interesting is Russ Wallen built that house. And he put the fence, the initial fence up when the property owner bought the property, he actually moved the fence. And you can see right here, that's over on our property. And it's about a, almost a two foot encumbrance. And so we're working with that property owner to get that squared away. He would, the fence that's there, very, very nice fence. And then he put a curb strip underneath it. So there's a concrete that runs the full layer underneath the fence, the curb strip. <laughs> and so, so he's not really thrilled about moving that. And he said, I already moved it once. And he said, I was I was pretty sure that Russ knew what he was doing since he built the house and where the property lines were. <laughs> so he said, but I moved it foot and it still wasn't enough. So I'm guessing it was closer to like three feet in coverage or he moved it. So, so we'll work with that. Um, we had, I think everything else we've squared away um so we have also uh, i sing phase two and phase two we um we would like to get preliminary plat approval on phase two and so that's kind of our next thrust is we're thinking that this is probably going to move forward pretty quickly between phase one and phase two um so we'd like to get you know that on the docket. I think the only probably the only fault right now is when I'm working when I'm working with Yeah. So I think until we get that settled, I don't know that I would be comfortable yeah. moving phase two forward. Know that I have been working on it. Yeah. Um so I think that's the only pull up right now for phase two when we being able to forward on the better tomorrow at noon crap um but let me know when to see how that goes but now we could probably start our engineering review with the assumption that it drops with the stars aligned and yeah and then the next item is you know we submitted phase two on that engineering we haven't got any red lights back on that so yeah that's um <laughs> Matt and I talked about it, and uh, I told Matt to hold off on it until I got dropped down squared away. Just because I don't know, I just don't. I don't know. I mean, I met with him a couple of times, but I asked him several questions. Some of the people that I think with the appraisal report, most of those questions we answered that would be goodbye. Okay. Um, so we are, um, yeah, we, we want to move this project forward as quickly as we can. What do we need to do to get a pre-construction meeting on at least phase one? Well, well, we haven't done final approval on phase one yet. So right. We, right. We haven't. So... So this would be another subsequent review, the, the red lines that you'll get back from on phase one. So once those comments are all addressed, depending on how many are outstanding after that, we just work towards getting final approval through this team. Okay. So, and I think we've corrected, I've seen you revised the engineering drawings, some of you in phase one. Which is... Is that that correct? Is it the 628? 
Yeah. So Matt's team, um, Matt. I think you yes. Did you send them a nice Because you've been emailing me to me. I certainly I very much it. appreciate it because I can't pull them out of there. But Matt can still pull them out yeah, of there. Yeah, Matt's got, we've got the 628. Okay. So, so if you'll read through those, we've incorporated. Uh, obviously, we'll have to do plain view revisions. So we'll get those done quickly to get those, get those done. And added to that, what it could be added in on that stream, space stream alteration. Yeah. Yeah. So I talked to CRS engineers a couple of days ago, and they are, so they sent a request to Matt, the city engineer, for some information so they could move forward. And as far as I know, I don't think they received that information back to the right end. Who is this battle? The CRS. Floodplain. That's on floodplain. Yeah, largely the floodplain, but they're on the doing the strike on the right alteration. So we will not allow the lots to be built on, but it would fall on the current floodplain. Right. And but we can move forward with, with development after the final with just the state street alteration. Right. Okay. So we'll put a put a Kind of a restriction on, I think it's just maybe lot one. It may be lot one. I, I'd have to look yeah. at the map. In talking with CRS, um, because there's the elevation is very flat on the front of that property and 42 inch pipe, they just, that's why they sent this information to Matt. They needed some information right. from them. And she said that. She said we could move forward with a stream alteration permit, but we really would kind of like to know where, you know, where the rest of this is going to go. Um, so they have to have some of the design yeah. criteria. That, you know, I'm just saying that's going to be it. that's going to be the another hold up on not even getting rethought is we want to allow this to move forward because essentially you can't build you run away in just the creek right away until you get it. But Okay. All right. So, Brandon, if you could have an email yeah, right now, if you guys would address those. Okay. And I'll follow up with them. We meet with them every Monday, so I would like to follow up with them if Brandon gets to we'll check in on Monday. Perfect. So, I guess uh, critical on that is just getting the red lines that we've, that we've corrected. If you and we'll do those. We'll get the time you stuff done right away. And then, um, and if you can get them first in CRS, so the CRS can move forward with the stream alterations that are going to gain. That's very good on down. Um, and then just keep you posted on props and what's there. Yeah. Um, so I have, I'm also waiting for Bonavista review on some of you. They did their review and red lines on Oak Hollow. I sent them to them at the same time. They, they sent back Oak Hollow right away, and, but they haven't gotten me some of you yet. So, hey, that, yeah. yeah, I think that's it. Does Fire Day have any? No, um, the only concern is that you're not doing phase two soon, a temporary turn. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. No. My guess is um, that we'll probably do all the road grading for the whole loop. So where this where this steps right now, we'll probably do grading all the way around. Um, if that makes sense. <laughs> and so you know you would be able to turn around on that easily. It'll be it'll gravel, but. As long as they'll hold the truck. They'll hold the truck. Okay. Yeah, we would have brought there. Okay. And then I guess the only other question, um, there was some discussion in our last meeting about the radius here at 6R. So there was some discussion on that, but it seems like we're okay. Okay. It's not Matt's favorite, but... And all right. Anything else? So some of you did. Just a point of clarification. 
No, no. Okay. All right. So we'll have that send you back his red lines from this review. And then the hope is that there's less and less comments, right? Yeah, that's the hope. <laughs> and it'll ultimately not. <laughs> Final and then we'll be honest and take it. But, but that's all done through the steam. Right. Okay. And then on um, on Oak Hollow, um, to, to, when we when we get final on that, that will be all in this week as well, right? We, to go back to you, we haven't done preliminary flat on Hollow, so that'll go. But yes, after planning commission gives preliminary flat approval on it, then it, all the other certainly this body. Okay, but the annexation does have to go to City Council. Into four mile. In four mile. They are the board of four mile. Uh, okay. So that's why I mentioned it takes a couple months to get that process. We have timelines. We have to wait out noticing requirements, fully public hearings. So that's what you say. So is that uh, is that annexation? Can you send me that application? Yeah, it's a petition. I'll have Jack email it at the end of the petition for that. Yeah, I'll okay. follow up with Jack. Perfect. Jenny, you mentioned that that was uh, due legislation that might get changed to Korea uh, process. So that'd be great. It's going to check that out. Yeah. If they reduce their timelines, that would be better for us. So that's something that he'll be able to do since that to you. All right. Thanks, sure. Mayor. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good news. Yeah. yeah. And it was, you know, it was a good meeting the other night. I didn't have to wait or anything. I feel that way. I wish you guys put the schedule as with all this nasty stuff I had to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> we do it here in our paper. Like... <laughs> it was a little entertaining. <laughs> no doubt. For us. Probably not for you. Probably, well, we're getting, we're getting conditions. I don't know what that says. Well, and I told the mayor earlier, I mean, we have, you know, you guys deal with every day and I mean, you're juggling a lot of love balls and a lot of things going on, and we appreciate your work and all your service that you do. So, thanks, Mike. Yeah, we do our best. We always do our best. So, okay. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, appreciate that. We'll hear from you soon. Okay, sounds good. It's good. All right. I know we have a walk in. If you want to come up to the table and introduce yourselves, we'll pull up. This is new for our our project management team. But let me pull up the parcel. You can pull up another chair to the table as well. So if you don't mind just telling us your names for the record. I'm Jill Schobel and I'm Larae Stewart. Thank you. I'm Jenny Knight. I'm the city administrator here, and I think we've spoken on the phone a couple of times. So this is the property that we're discussing uh, for the purposes of our meeting today. And you had some questions for our team on possible development or subdivision or yeah, rezoning. Probably um, we just wanted. It's very early in what we're trying to do. Um, this is my father's property. He's passed away. Um, this is my sister, 687 is my sister. Okay. okay. So what we're trying to do um, is a couple of things. The initial call I had with you, you said there might be a possibility to put a flag lot on there. The other thing is um, if it would be possible to extend um, Larray's property, the 687 to the west, and then um, about a quarter of an acre she's hoping our, we don't know if that's possible. Our plot is uh, one and a fourth, and I'd like to extend it out to one and a half if possible. So you'd be taking in part of this property? Yes. Okay. Um, so we just need to find out what's... So you can do that through a subdivision pro process if you're going to subdivide. So, so I guess I just want to clarify, are these two different questions? Because our initial... Conversation was based on you possibly subdividing 705 with a rezone to RE15 and then doing a flat lot to have two houses yes. in a space. Well, not necessarily houses, but yeah. 
Okay, so this is a separate question that you're going to extend the boundaries of 687. Yeah, that's why I called yeah. it on Tuesday to see if that's even I don't know if they require subdivisions. They're not subdivided. Seven oh five. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to make seven oh five. So you got to figure out what you want to do first because if you take property away from seven oh five, that may make that not. And I don't yeah. know. You might not be able to develop the way yeah. you want it or subdivide it the way you want it. Because and that's yeah. That's why we're here to find out what sure. is available. And I have not sure. appraised. Okay. And he did appraise it as a flat lot, but he says he talked to someone here. Um, about trying to do the, the other option of giving the uh, quarter of an acre or adding it to the raised property. And so I talked to the appraiser, but we didn't have any conversation about the neighboring property. We only talked about the potential of subdividing the 705. So you can only eight eight. So, but, and that's why I was getting Yeah. So that's why we like to have it in this meeting. So <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have notes and minutes too. Yeah. But if you were to take away property from 705, it's already non conforming in our A1 zone. But that means it's the A1 zone requires an acre for 40,000 square feet for a lot. It's less than that. And so it would make, it, it wouldn't be allowed because it would make this property less conforming to our code. The only way you'd be able to do that is to rezone it to RE15. So first. We spent yeah, and then some devices. Yeah. Residential 15,000 square feet. Yes. And it is in our future land use map for this area to be rezoned to RE15. It's identified in our uh, I could show yeah, that. That's big yellow how far in the future would that be, though? Petition made by the property owner. So okay. we uh, we don't make zoning changes unless it's requested by a property owner, right? And so, but it, our future land use map will show you where what the city intends for that property to change to eventually. But again, that's always private property, right? Driven. We don't we don't go through the city and do that on our own. <laughs> so if we go up to this space, the property sits. This is our future land use map and it's showing this whole space is already 15. Okay. So that is a potential uh, solution if you want to add more. It, it, you can always have more property than 15,000 square feet. It's just the minimum would have to be 15,000 square feet in the RV 15. So what I'm hearing, just let me clarify, is it is possible and it's probably, we have a better chance of rezoning it because this is in the works. Okay. <laughs> I'm learning as I go. Yeah. Um, and I know I spoke to you to propose that. Um, you, you'll help me through that. But I guess what I'm again asking is the flag lot feasible or possible, or is the quarter acre? Is that a yes to both, or is that? So it depends. Probably a either or is going to be my best guess because if you're taking property away from 705 to add to 687, both remaining lots have to be 15,000 square feet. So, but if, unless it's rezoned, correct? But even yeah, after the rezone, even after both. the rezone would require them both to remain. So you'd have to have 30,000 square feet left to do two lots in the RE15. And the other thing we talked about briefly is what the structure, how that plays into it. Are, are you going to, demolish the existing home and rebuild, or are you going to leave it? Because that would play into the flag lot, what access frontage. I know there's a 140 feet frontage right. on 705. So that's pretty consistent with 100 feet and then 40 feet and access for a flag lot. But it just all depends on what you're proposing. See, and that's what we're trying to figure out what we're going to do too. So the access into that flag lot, 
would that have to, would, could that be part of the 15,000 square feet? Yes, the square footage counts towards the 15,000 square okay. foot. So say just for purposes, completely speculation, not, not anything, uh, but if you were to leave this residence, and have a flag lot driveway down this side and then subdivide off this front space and there was 15,000 square feet here, then this back portion would become the flag lot and this portion would become available to build a new residence or whatever. That's just a proposal, right. not, or not even a proposal, just a just an idea. Example. An example, thank you. Yeah. But if you take property from here to add to this one, there may not be enough remaining property. It could still be RE15 and have one lot, but not to subdivide into two lots and create a flag lot. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. yeah, it, is clear. it might be a or. 705 has to remain 30,000. Right. Okay. So to do two to do two lots. Right. So you'll want to make sure that you've got 30,000 square feet before you give anything to 687. Okay. And I'd be happy to work with you on any questions or anything that you have access to. Where you? My name is Brandon Green, and I can give you my cell number. I would appreciate that. It's 725 472 And we'll look at the flag lot ordinance. See what we can do as well on the on flag lot. So makes sense. You know what's going on? You got a point. Absolutely. Right. Yep. Yeah. And then we can see what you want to do it works out how what application process you have to go through to make it happen. Okay. But you will if you're if you're planning on you will have to go through a rezone process. So you're going to have to rezone it if you're going to want to create. Awesome. Right. If we don't create two lots, we can add the quarter acre to my six acres. That can be just done through a lot line adjustment. But it, it would, be, it would so make it more nuts to Oh, and all I mean, you're right. If you rezone 705, you could take that quarter acre and leave your one lot 705, take up to we have 15,000 square feet for your RE15 lot of 705 and take the rest in the paper. Okay. So you still have to rezone 705 either way. But once you rezone that, you can take up to 30,000 if you're turning 705 to two lots or up to 15,000 to leave the one lot. So you still have to rezone 705 either way. And then once you've done that, you have a minimum lot size on 705 or 15,000 square feet per lot. Okay. We can talk about it. All right. Thank you for your time. Can I have through to this? <laughs> you're going to, if you're going to subdivide that and you're going to have two, two land parcels on there, uh, the new lot that's created will require its own binding water connection. We do not share connections for two parcels. So the original connection will go to probably the front parcel up by 2550, and you'll be required to come in and pay for a new connection or water main zone on the north side of the road. So that, that can get kind of a little spendy because we have to cross the road and get in and then stub it into the flag lot portion. But yeah, I know that new parcel will require its own connection. And, and the same policy. I'm glad you brought that up that because that was my question. Yeah. And I was going it will require attachment connection. I can assume that the water's been allocated for that whole parcel. So water, you won't have to transfer the water because it's already on it. It's just a matter of the new connection, its own connection. Which, if she takes the quarter acre, she's already got her water, she so got, it's a non issue, yeah, right? You just need to get a new connection yeah, back into that. Only a few additional ones. Some additional Okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Each land ID has to have their connection. Okay. And that will be the same for your culinary water. Oh, you're going to have to make a sale. Okay. So that's something to consider. Yeah. Moving forward and the cost associated with it. 
Yeah, yeah we talked about that. Yeah. That's okay. Okay. Thank you for telling well, me. <laughs> I'm like, no, we're not sharing water. <laughs> well, we have everyone in the team here. Yeah. All right, let's know if you have additional questions. Good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. So just for the project management the team, I skipped over one item so that we can address it for some. So we did receive an application for a text amendment change to the cluster land use ordinance. It's quite an extended proposal. I reviewed it. Do you have any comments you want to go over before I give my recommendation? No. But I sense some hesitancy there, Brandon. You well, I speak your mind. I um the information that was provided is actually quite full yes. information. It's antiquated code. Very. Um, and I think there's I think there's some better information out there that could be represented, but that being said. Cluster developments have their place, and the ordinance has its place in cities. But there's other ways to provide zoning options for developers through ordinances that maybe are a little bit more updated and use more common planning and zoning practices. So I agree. Yes. My suggestion and recommendation to the to the team would be not recommending making any modifications to the code, but looking at repealing and reenacting and repealing and replacing it. Well, repealing and replacing it with a newer part. Updated. Yes. But yeah, that would deal with infill and that would deal with property, you know, unique properties because that's, um, that's, Realistically, what with what uh, Harrisville City has a lot of is some infill, and so we need to look at these properties. And is there a is there a every property is going to be unique? And the the, the tough thing is is every property owner has concerns related to infill and how that looks and how their property is affected. But I think if it's done and planned out properly. It can be a benefit to city and neighboring with property. We're going to fail on that. Okay. We don't need to yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Which that would be my recommendation. My recommendation. Let's let's repeal that place. Good. Uh, well, it's just more. Uh, more stringent regulations around size, minimum of 10 acres, uh, requiring the conservation measures for shared road space and the infrastructure to protect My open space areas. Part of my struggle is the 10 acre minimum because there's going to be properties that are under the 10 acres that I think if done well and done right it can still be developed to provide all the same stuff as acres. open space conservation, but to limit it to 10 acres uh, minimum, I, that just I think that just makes some unique challenges, especially when we're talking about properties that are remaining that you know the infill properties, I guess is what we're trying to get to. So again, I don't know that we right now I don't feel comfortable in saying we we limit it to 10 acres. I think we need to look at it. We need to look at other ordinances and other options and, and we'll leave this in place and work on an ordinance where we can repeal and replace what we couldn't be found. That's great. I agree with your recommendation. We'll put that in the record and we'll begin process of possibly. Dealing with an infill slash conservation, conservation slash yeah preserving open space type of a an ordinance yeah 
but it is in place. Yeah. I think that would be, would be well done. Yeah. All right. That is our last discussion item for project management. And I think our shortest meeting in the last while. <laughs>